Well hello guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be sharing a special video with you about performance modifications for my Fiesta ST. So there's been a lot of talk on forums and groups about which mods will give you which power figure. So I'm wanting to compare all the stages of tuning for my car from stock all the way up to that 200 spec and to share some graphs of power and talk with you as well. So you really feel the talk, it's not all just about the power figures, but there's also the sound, the emotion that the car generates when you drive it, they're all very important things to consider. So guys, I'd like to take you into the dyno with me, let's have a listen to the Fiesta ST on the rollers with the 200 spec. So as with anything scientific, it's worth stating your assumptions up front. So first of all, all the results have been generated from the same car, my 2008 Fiesta ST150. It's been taken over an 11 year period from 2012 to 2023, as I've incrementally added things onto the car. So engine wear and aging are not really accounted for in the explanation, but you may see some effects of that. And there's two different dynos that have been used, the AMD tuning one in Essex and Jamsport up in Northampton. For the inlet and the cams, the Jamsport rollers were under reading, so just keep that in mind, the absolute figures might not be right, but the trends should be representative. Data was taken from a reading off the curves that I have from the printouts, not from the original data source, so I've done my very best to be accurate with that. So power and torque curves cross over around the 5200 RPM, as you'd expect to see. All the units are in brake horsepower and torques in pound-feet or foot-pounds. Um, sorry to all the kilowatt and newton meeting dudes out there. Um, but there's some conversion factors if you want to do your maths after. So let's get started, I'll talk you through the mods. Um, so I bought the car in 2009 and started modifying it within a few weeks of ownership. I've got a first dyno run which is the car stock and then with the introduction of a KNN filter and a Miltec 4 to 1 manifold. I then went away and made some further mechanical modifications adding in a sports cat a mound tune cat back system, 60 mil throttle body, and then I took it back to AMD for another remap because I was having some issues with fueling and the car not passing the MOT. Next up, I added a COSI rep inlet manifold and the mound tune uh, cold air induction system. I then took that to Jamsport for a remap before I had the new cams fitted. Um, so I've got five different lines to show you on a graph. If you look at them, wow, that's a lot of data to take in. So I'll talk you through it one step at a time. So this is the stock car, it's making around 150 horsepower and the torque level is coming in maybe around 137 or so pound-feet. When fitting the K&N and the Miltec you do see a big jump in the torque, so that's the thing you feel in the city of your pants when you press the pedal and off you go. So that's the twisting force coming from the engine and then you can see a bit of an increase in power and also the red line increased as well up to 7000. So originally the car didn't really pull that hard, it felt a bit wheezy, a bit choked, and with those modifications it actually freed up quite a bit of power. The cost for doing that was somewhere around the six to eight hundred pound mark, you're probably looking about a hundred quid for a K&N, maybe three to four hundred pounds for your manifold and a couple of hundred quid for a remap. So next up I bought a sports cat, the cat back, a 60mm throttle body and that stage two map at AMD. So again, a really good improvement in torque across the whole range from doing that. I think freeing up the exhaust, helping the engine to breathe a bit better really does make a difference, also improves the noise quite a bit. Not sure if the 60mm throttle body does a lot, but the Stage 2 remap definitely helped. So the cost for doing that, you're probably looking around two to three hundred pounds for a sports cat, similar for a cat back. 60mm throttle bodies anywhere from three to six hundred pounds, depending on where you look, and obviously the cost for the remapping as well but I've got a big jump up in performance, somewhere around 170 brake and a big chunk of extra torque as well. So at this point, you'd be perfectly happy with the car. You probably won't notice any further modifications a huge amount on the road, apart from maybe the noise that they make. So that's the next line you see here, this red one. And this is what happened when I fitted the COSI Rep inlet manifold. It's really not well designed to get the best performance out of the Fiesta ST. 
I think originally those manifolds were designed for a 2.3 litre engine that has higher flow. A lot of the boys running their supercharged and turbocharged cars like them because they get better flow, but you're not really cashing in anything until you're at a much higher RPM. But the sound is fantastic, and that's something I'll share with you in a moment. But yes, you see a little bit of a drop off in peak performance and in torque as well, so without doing a full remap, and also going from one set of rollers to the other, it doesn't look like a great value for money modification. If you compare the two side by side, I would say at this point you've probably reached your kind of peak value for money uh, coming from the blue line. You're looking at about £1,200 to about £1,600 spend, but you're seeing a big change in the noise, the power delivery. It's, it's a very different experience driving the car with the inlet manifold. You do tend to rev it out a lot harder than you would without that. So now let's look at the effect of putting in the cams and the remap which takes the power up to about 190 to 200 brake horsepower. Um, again, you do see a drop in the torque. That's coming partly from the inlet manifold, partly from the cams, but you really are gaining quite a lot in the top end. If you're driving the car a lot on the track and you're using that high RPM performance, actually this makes a lot of sense. There's a lot of area under the curve here where you're generating useful power for everyday driving, in traffic or around town, you're probably better off not going much further than the blue line. You're not really gaining anything until you're up over 6,000 RPM. So most people don't tend to drive there every day. Um, so for those special moments on a B road or if you manage to get to a track, it really does make a difference. It does sound fantastic and above about 5,000 RPM, you really do notice the torque starting to pick up uh, and the noise you get is really addictive. So that's something to consider as well. It's not always about how fast you go, Sometimes it's about how you feel while you're doing it. So here are all the lines overlaid um, and the cost then for going for the remap and the cams, you're probably talking around £3,000 to do the full modification. The cost of a Fiesta ST on the used market is in the kind of two to four grand range depending on the spec. So you're almost spending the same again to add 40 horsepower and effectively to get back to where you were with the torque figures from stock. So comparing those two together, the stock and the improved performance, you really are seeing a big difference. You're not losing a huge amount of torque actually versus a stock car when you do go to remap um, with the cams. So that's something to consider as well. Um, a lot of people talk about that loss of torque. You can buy different inlet manifolds. Uh, the Mountune ones are pretty good. Um, they do help improve the low down performance, but they do cost a couple of grand. There's not many of them knocking around, so you can end up spending a fortune. Who wants to spend five grand tuning a Fiesta ST to deliver maybe an extra 10%. It's probably not worth it. So in conclusion, um, going from 148 horsepower to 170-ish with the blue modification, so the sports cat, the full exhaust, uh, the stage one and stage two maps, um, and then adding on the KNN as well. And then at the higher RPM, you're really unlocking things. If you were able to push the engine and using it for track days, it's definitely the way to go. You do notice a difference. So there we go. Final comparison then of cost, value for money, I'll let you guys decide what works best for you. So in conclusion, there's much more to driving than numbers. So let's have a listen. So here is the sound of the stock car. Here's the sound with an exhaust. And the sound with cams and an inlet. I don't know about you guys, but personally, I've gone down the route of cams in the inlet. I think it sounds fantastic. So then there's the consideration about where you'll use the car. Is it for daily driving? Probably keep the stock inlet and cams. If it's for track days and you're up in the rev range, you're living in that kind of five to seven and a half thousand RPM range, definitely go for the inlet and cams. Value for money? For me, full exhaust, a decent inlet and a remap. Probably cost you about 1200 quid and get you most of the benefits. But do a remap after you've made all the hardware changes as well. I've done several remaps through the life of the car, and if you add up the cost of that, um, actually it's probably not the best value for money way of doing things. But now there's a really thriving second-hand market for parts. Uh, consider that versus the value of the car and how much you're willing to spend. You may be able to pick up a second-hand exhaust for a few hundred quid that will do most of the job. So thanks very much for watching all. Don't forget to like and subscribe. But for now, engineer out.